I'm Marco from Get Low Racing. On supermoto checks, you often see guys getting uh, down below the handlebars of the straightaway to get some aerodynamic advantage and to get more speed. But I was always wondering, does it actually make a difference? So today we decided to test it out thoroughly and see whether you should also get low on the straightaway or if it doesn't even matter. To do this test, we came over here in Grobnik, Croatia. Not on the racetrack, but on the airfield, where the Aero Club Grilla Kvarnera was super, super nice to us to let us use their airstrip for our testing. So guys, if you want to parachute or maybe fly around this area, be sure to check this link, go to their website and see what it's all about. Now, let's get to flying. For the test, we laid down a 200 meter long straight, which is a bit longer than you will uh, find on most supermoto tracks around the world. We will do a rolling start in fifth gear, so we can eliminate the variable of starting and shifting. At the end of the straight, we'll be measuring the final top speed with the system that Alpha Street Gaming has made for us. We will pass these two roulette sensors and the central unit will show our final speed. Marco taking some Instagram shots. To get the entry speed as precise as possible, we are using this setup. We are using an external GPS antenna, which is much more precise than the one in the phones which is connected via Bluetooth to my uh, personal phone which will have a display of the speed so I will go at constant speed and when I hit that starting line I'm gonna let it rip Now that we are already here, I wanted to test something else out. I wanted to try with my motocross bike, which is identical in every way to that one, except this one has an original engine. It's not really a scientific test because the gear ratios over here and the tires are different, but hey, I'm curious. data so Eric uh, what does it say all right so we did uh, six runs for each pose and here are the average final speeds and the times for the poses would be for the normal pose the average time was seven seconds for the aero pose it was 6.8 seconds shit that's actually a big difference 
the forward leading position was in between with 6.9 seconds and the MX bike, despite the slowest uh, final speed, it was 6.8 seconds as well. Uh, that's very interesting, but I think uh, with the MX bike uh, it had a much lower gearing than the Supermoto bike. Uh, so right when I started on the straight it was already high in the power band and it was pulling right away. Uh, the Supermoto bike it needed a second because it started very very low in the RPM range. So I'm actually surprised that the Supermoto bike still managed to be faster at the end, which means uh, that when the power band kicks in, it kicks in hard. You've seen the results. What will you do on the track from now on? Well, actually, two tenths is quite a big difference. Uh, it can easily be from first to fifth position in racing scenario. So I was hoping the results would be a little bit closer because I really don't like getting in that aero pose. It's really a lot of work and cumbersome. I will though use the aero position uh, for some tracks that have a really long straight, uh, like maybe Castelletto di Brunduzza in Italy. Great! Okay, so that was about the straights and now I'm really looking forward to film you guys doing some supermoto slides. Yeah, me too. Alright, so that's it for this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, please uh, drop them in the comments below. We'll try to answer all of you. Uh, it was our first video, so please be nice. If you like the video, uh, share it, subscribe to our channel, we'll be super grateful. Thanks again for the Aero Club Krille Cornera to let us use the airfield and to Alpha Street Gaming for providing us the speed measuring system. See you guys!